Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanna to cover how to use Google Slides if you are a beginner. If you like this video and want me to make a part two with more tips, make sure you give this video a thumbs up so I know that that's something that you would be interested in and also let me know in the comments below. I'll leave a list of everything that I'll be covering today in the description box along with their timestamps if you're looking for something specific or wanna skip around a little bit. So let's get started. Okay, so to access Google Slides, you will need to log into your Gmail. And if you don't know how to use Gmail or log in, I did make a video about it, which I will link in the description box. But we're just gonna go right into Gmail. And once I'm in my Gmail, I'm gonna go up here to these three dots, and this is Google Apps. And if I scroll down, here is Slides. So we're just gonna click on Slides to open it up. So from here, you can actually start a blank presentation from scratch, or you can use their template gallery by clicking on that. And you can see all of the templates that they have already pre-filled, which is really nice because if you wanna give your presentation a little pizzazz, but you don't have a lot of time or you aren't super creative, this is a great way to do that. But we are gonna start from scratch. And so I'm gonna click the plus sign to open up a blank presentation. And the default is gonna be just like a title slide where you can add a title and a subtitle. So we're just gonna begin here and say example presentation. And if I wanna change the font or size, I can highlight it and then right up here, I can change the font, I can change the size. And if I click more, I can actually change it, you know, bold, italic, underline, I can change the color. And I can also animate it. So I'm just gonna show you how to use some simple animations to make your presentation pop. So if you highlight something that you wanna animate, so we're gonna highlight example presentation. On the right hand side here, if you click to animate, this motion section will pop up. So you wanna go down to object animations and let's choose, we'll drop it down and then the options we can choose are, let's do fly in from the left. And we're gonna do it automatically, which is after previous. And we're just gonna click play to kind of see the preview for what that looks like. Okay, cool. And if you click stop, you can actually make more edits. So maybe you want it to go faster or you can have it come in super slow if you want to as well. And then if we wanted to do that to another section on this slide, we can just type in Google Slides, highlight that, and then click Add Animation. And we are gonna opt for, let's have it fly in from the right. And we're gonna have it go after previous, which is automatic, so let's see what that looks like together. And if you decide that you don't like the animation feature that you've created, if you just kind of drop down the feature, you see this trash can comes up, so you can just choose to delete any motion animations. If you wanna change the background of your slide, you can do that with the background section right here, change background. And you can change it to a solid color or a gradient. Or you can actually choose your own image. So if you click choose image, there are a bunch of different options. You can upload something. You can take a picture from the camera on your computer. You can put a link to something. You can use your Google Photos, your Google Drive. We're gonna do Google image search because I really like that feature that you can just search for anything on the web. So let's just say coffee. So I want this to be my background of my slide and this will pop up and you just wanna click insert. Click done, and there you go. That's how you can add a background of your own image to your Google Slides. And if for any reason you decide you don't like it, you can just go to background and click reset to theme, and click done, and it will send you back to normal. You also have the option to change your theme while you're messing with your presentation. So if you go to theme, we can, just start clicking on all these, clicking through and seeing which one we like the best. And there are so many options and so you can just change them at any time during your creation of your presentation. We're just gonna use this one for the rest of the example. So now let's add a new slide so that we can talk about some more features. So up here, 
you can either click on the plus sign and that will automatically give you a new slide which is a title and body text slide or you can click the drop down and it'll show you all the different options for slide layouts. So for this one I want to do, we're going to do title in two columns for this next one. And if you decide once you get it here and you don't like it, you can actually just go up to layout and switch. So let's just do title only. And for this slide, we're going to talk about how to use transitions between slides. So if I want to have a nice transition between slide one and slide two, if I click transition, the default option is none. So what we're going to do is let's do cube and let's just see what that looks like that looks pretty cool i like it i might want it to go a little bit faster so we'll just bump it up test it again and we can stop so that's how you add transitions and you can just go in at the very end of your presentation once you're done making all of your slides click apply to all slides and it will do the same transition between every single one if that's what you want and if you decide that you don't like how it looks you can just go back to the transitions and click none and the transition will go away. So now I'm going to add a new slide to talk about inserting things like images, videos, and sounds. Why don't we do a section header on this one? All right, so say we want to insert an image on this page. So if we go up to insert, image is the first one. And again, it's the same options as background. So you can upload from your computer use all these options we're just going to do the same thing we did before and search from web and let's see i'm going to use this one this time and as you can see once you select an image a blue check mark is going to pop up and you just have to click insert at the bottom and it will insert your image and you can just use these corners to kind of adjust the size and move it around wherever you want it to go and then if you want to make any changes to your image if you click format options here are all the options that you can use to kind of play around with your image and make it more customized to your presentation. But let's say we got this image and it's a great size and we like its location, but we decide that we want to switch out this image. We don't really like this particular coffee cup image anymore. I can actually go once I've clicked on the image and it's highlighted in blue, I can click replace image and we're going to search the web again for coffee mug this time. And let's see, I like this one better. So I'm just going to click on this one and again, go down and click replace. And it's going to automatically replace that image with the new one in the exact same position and size of your old image, which is really nice. Also, if you want to crop an image, you just use this tool right up here and use the black corners to crop where you want your image to be. And then when you're happy with it, you can just click return or enter and it will crop your image for you. You can also insert videos from YouTube, from a specific URL, or from your Google Drive. So let's just find a video on YouTube. We'll just use this one. So here we have this great video, and here are all the video playback options. So you can opt to have it play manually where you actually have to click play on the video to get it to start. You can have it play automatically, and you can also start it at a specific point. So if you found a YouTube video that you really like, but you only need to show from five minutes to five minutes and 30 seconds for your class or something like that, you can change that as well. You can also add borders by going up here and clicking border weight. And maybe let's do four point and outline it in white. And that just makes it look a little bit more intentional when you are making your presentation. And you can do the same thing with images as well. If you want to put a border on them, you can do that here. Now let's say we want to add a little bit of text explaining what this video is about. If we go up here and click T, which is the text box, once it's in yellow, that means the tool is activated. So if we go down here, as you can see, there is this kind of T cross. If you just click and drag, you will make a text box and you can just start typing And you can adjust the size of your text box once you're done, make it bigger or smaller, and also just drag it around where you want it to go. And you can also put a border around text boxes as well. And you can also fill in the text box if you want. That looks really nice, so we are going to keep it looking like that. 
And now let's say I want to move this text box on top of the video so that people can see what the video is about quickly. And I go to move it, but it is going behind my video. So there's two ways you can fix that. So I can click on my video and click arrange, order, and send backward. And then now my text is on top. Or if you want to right click and choose order as an option, you can do that here as well. I also want to talk about undoing mistakes. So if you make a mistake on something you accidentally deleted, your text box that you worked so hard on, if you hit command Z, it will undo whatever you just did. And you can also do that up here by, oops, we just deleted it up here. If you hover over, it says undo and you can undo what you did. You can also redo something if you, let's say you deleted something and you wanna undo it, but then you decide that you actually, that is what you wanted to do, you can just click redo and it will go back to what you originally had. You can also do this if you accidentally delete an entire slide. If you click delete and you're like, oh no, I want my slide back. If you just click undo, it will come back. All right, so let's do one more slide to talk about word art. And so I'm gonna click new slide. We're gonna do main point for this one. And I want to insert word art. So this box is gonna pop up and you're just gonna have to type what you want it to say. And it will pop up here. I'm just gonna delete the text box that they originally gave me. And so with my word art, there are a lot of options. So I can choose the fill color and up here in the shift, this is gonna be all the like pre-installed colors for the theme that you've chosen. So this is how you know you can stay within your color scheme is by using a color up here. So we're gonna use this blue and we're gonna make the outline this goldish color and make it a point. I can also choose to use a drop shadow if I want. So if I want this to look like it's really shadowy, I can kind of mess with the settings here. You can put it way off to the side or just kind of like a little bit to look more three dimensional. You can also add a blur radius, which looks cool on some designs as well. But let's just say you decided that you actually don't like the drop shadow. If you just uncheck this box right here, it will just go back to how it was before. So this is how you can kind of test out different designs and see if you like them. And if not, you can just uncheck it. You can also include a reflection or you can maybe rotate it a little bit if you wanted it on an angle. So there are a bunch of ways to play around with word art. So now let's say your presentation is complete and you are ready to share it with the world. The first thing I would recommend is previewing it. So if you go up to present and click the drop down and click present from beginning. It will give you a presentation of what your slideshow is gonna look like and you will just have to manually click the next arrow to get to your next slides. And then once you're happy with it, you can just click escape. And then there are a couple ways to share your slideshow. So you can share it by just going up here and clicking share. We can name it, click save. And then we can choose people that we want to share the presentation with. So I'm going to share it with myself just so I can show you what it would look like shared. And I'm going to change the permissions to just be a viewer so that nobody can make changes to my presentation. And I'm going to click send. So now I will show you what this presentation looks like once it's sent out to somebody. So we are going to click open in slides. And now this person can see all of the slides that you created, but they won't be able to make any changes. I can make changes because I am logged in as myself, obviously. But if you have somebody set as a viewer and not an editor, they won't be able to make changes to your presentation. Another way you can do this is by going to file and publish to web. And in this option, it's going to show up as an actual slideshow instead of just the slides. So in this section, you can actually change if you want the slides to auto advance and how long you want them to do that for. You can go from every second to every minute. And you can choose to start the slideshow as soon as the player loads and restart after the last slide. So we are gonna use those settings and click publish. We do wanna publish it. And so now we're gonna copy this link. It says press command C to copy. And let's just paste it into a new browser. And so the slideshow is going to automatically start. As you can see, it's already going from slide to slide every three seconds. If there's a video, it is going to pause and have the video play. And then at the end, it will go to the next slide. 
and then that is the end of the presentation. So that's how it shows up if you choose to publish it to the web as a slideshow, as opposed to just sending somebody the Google slide link. They're just gonna see it as separate slides. So it just depends on what you're going for and what you're sending out. So that is it for today for some Google Slides for Beginners information. Again, if you want me to make a part two, just let me know in the comments down below. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I really, really appreciate the support and I will see you in my next video. Bye.